Hey everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Super Paper Mario. I am Big 400. You want real danger? How about my duel with the foul Rainbowzilla? What? Yeah, I think Flint Cragway is might be exaggerating a bit. Um, but anyway, last time we were in uh, Flint Cragway's, or we, we met Flint Cragway, and we we're heading deeper into the uh, floral uh, caverns. Uh, a light grew. Maybe it's the pure heart. Yeah, we know the floor. Uh, the floor sapiens have the pure, pure heart. No, pure heart. But ooh, the menace of King, King Crocus. I guess we'll be fight, fighting him. Um, but we don't know where they are, so we'll have to explore this cave some more. They gnash its fangs at us, but then no, a sight too horrible to believe appeared before her eyes. Boss, nothing's happened yet. Bra. I know that, you cretin. The sight too horrible to believe it is still up ahead. We're going to look for it now. Come on, move. Okay, whatever you say, Flint. Wait that, bra. <laughs> Boss, no. Monza no one to be left behind. Why? I thought you didn't like him. You can hang with us, Monza. You could be our se uh, our fourth hero. You can use your camera powers to uh, make enemies be distracted. I don't know. That's what I want to say. Actually, I wouldn't mind seeing... Uh, a Mario game where I mean, I can pay more, the other ones kind of do that, but like really, really, really unimportant characters are your partners. Uh, I mean, like you could make the claim that Gumbario and and them are just standard generic uh, characters in the other Paper Mario games, and they're not, you know, that important. But I mean, like insanely unimportant. I guess Flurry's kind of unimportant, but um, even more so, like uh, like uh. I want to play as, uh, what's his name, from, um, Dupree from TTYD, the Disco Dancing Dog. That should have been a partner. He should have been one of our characters. I mean, that would have been fun. His special move could have been Afro. Afro. Um, so, anyway, what else have I been, uh, up to lately? I know some people might not want to, you know... Uh, might not care about what I, I'm up to, but usually when I say that, I usually go into a bigger, uh, deep discussion. And right now, there's not a ton to... Oh, wait. Ooh, they're going... They're leaving there, but they're leaving with little sprouts on their head. Not sure if we can enter there yet, so we should probably head to the right. Um, but right now, there's not a ton to talk about. Um, I guess my thing is when... I've said this before, when I do a Let's Play, if there's nothing to talk about, I might as well talk about something, even if it's off-topic. Unless you'd rather me just go like, uh, uh, bum ba dum ba dum, bum ba dee dum dum, bum ba dum, bum bum. There is a flower, and I'm going down a hole, and I'm going to jump and fall down a hole again. Look, there's some fluoro sapien, or fluoro cragons, and I'm killing that. Yeah, I don't want to do that the entire episode. Maybe someone would like that. Uh, that's not, uh, style I prefer to do. Anyway, we need to wait on the switch, and the only thing in this area that, uh, can add weight would be. The floral Cragons. Yeah, you can pick them up, you just can't kill them. So let's use them to wait on the switch. And look, a pipe. Hello, pipe. Bye bye, Cragon. Um. But anyway, recently I actually uh, completed Epic Mickey. Um. And I'm kind of not. I'm gonna say disappointment, not just because I'm in the game. Because I've unlocked, like, all the cutscenes, and I did, like, the good path. So I didn't do anything that would be evil. So that means, at most, there's one cutscene of being evil, which is probably the ending. I don't know. I kind of feel like if they were going to play up the whole good and evil thing, they would have had cutscenes for, you know, that, that uh, a whole set of evil cutscenes and a whole set of good cutscenes. Um, because in the most of the cutscenes, Mickey's kind of acting, you know, good or decent. Whereas in the, you know, if he was being evil, he wouldn't be acting that way unless he was being deceptive. Either way, though, in terms of game, though... That, the ending was just uh, for the good one. It, it it made me feel emotional. I I, I I you know don't usually feel. A, I honestly don't feel any emotion. I am a machine. No, but um, it it was very uh, touching, I guess. And overall, the game was good. I mean, you could point out its faults in terms of gameplay, but I think the way it told its story and uh, the way it, it just worked, I really just enjoyed playing the game. And if um, I'd say it's my biggest surprise of 2010 in terms of games, because it wasn't a game I was originally thinking of getting. Uh, and usually games based on, at least nowadays, games based on uh, well-known properties like Mickey Mouse don't tend to be all that good. But, um, I don't know, I think it was good. Uh, definitely not the best game of all time, but it was 
a game that, that kept me going and kept me uh, wanting to play it. Um, so I, I, you know, it, it's, and it goes back to my thing yesterday, or in the last episode with, um, oh look, a skull. Well, that means there's something hidden underneath it, as said by the sign, and we can use sleep to find something, and that something happens to be a key. Um, but yeah, the, I guess the thing would be uh, that sometimes, so, you know, the gameplay is, you know, pretty generic uh, to an extent. You know, the the, the firing um, paint and thinner is kind of interesting, but it's kind of meh. The camera does screw up quite a bit, and that can be annoying. But just the way the music works, the way the visuals work, and the way the story is told, uh, really works for it. Which brings me on to something deeper. Uh, I honestly think, and this is more of an opinion thing, it's not really any proven, nothing proven, but I almost feel voice acting is less immersive. Uh, games with voice acting uh, immerse you less into the world and the story, ooh, level up, than um, games without voice acting. Uh, and you might be wondering, well, wait a minute, they're voice acting, you would think that that would... Actually, wait, hold on. Is there going to be a cutscene real quick, if I recall? Yeah. Eek! Found us. Garbo thought this was a good hiding spot since Key was lost, brah. Yes, this is unexpected. But so is a storm of rain. Such is the way of things. There are no absolutes. Exactly. He, that guy knows how, what I'm talking about. What do we do, brah? Come, come. Be at peace. Calm your raging inner sea. Let's mate it on this. You're probably right, brah. Dot, 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 dot. Got it. Evil Boz, you take Garbo. Garbo, Gabro, give up. But her, don't hurt Pixel. But you... What was what was that noise, Bowser? <laughs> no, let Garbo speak. Bra, you kept bra Garbo company. You helped hide Garbo. Garbo, oh, you big bra. Big debt from Pixel. Garbo's time ending, but Garbo really want you to live free. Live free. As free as the wind blows. Do not be hasty in fear. Look closer. That is not one of the Florosapiens. No, it's Bowser's obviously a Florosapien. I don't know what you're talking about. Could you you come to save Garbo? Wasn't on the schedule, pal, but I guess we just did. How? All we did was come over here. Neither was Flint Cragley. What? Flint here, too? Garbo, huge Cragley fan. Cragley do something, brah. Cragley save us all. Why don't you go find Flint, for I must bid you farewell. What? Why? You not come with Garbo? Humans and Pixels are Kraguns and Pixels for that matter. Shouldn't linger too long together. It's interesting, this Pixel is actually, besides Barry, is one of the few that uh, is not being hidden away, who is just floating around. I'm not sure why, but... Uh, yeah, this is our technically the last Pixel. There are two more optional Pixels, but the last required Pixel. Um, and as she will demonstrate right now, her power, and she is a she, because I think he said she, is a shrink. And shrinking is actually, can be kind of useful. I don't use it all that much, but it can, you can actually, it can be a very useful power. Um, there are varying things you can do with uh, the ability to, sh uh, to shrink. Which I'll talk about in a second. Rain still falls in my heart. The taken souls cry out. Why do they cry such tears? You must stop this torrent. Fate brought us together, great hero of a thousand five hundred years. Now you must take me there, to the deep, dark underbelly of the Earth. Okay, and we got Dottie. Uh, Dottie is the pixel that can shrink you, as I said. Uh, this will allow you to enter small spaces. Uh, also, there are little shops throughout the world called Itty Bit Shops that let you buy food. Uh, we can now access them. And I think you can also walk on water. And you also uh, are faster and can avoid enemies while still being able to attack them if you, I think, I think you can still attack them to an extent. Maybe not. Either way, though, it's kind of a useful power. I don't use it all that much, but it's, you know, it's interesting. Um, it's kind of similar to Mini Mario, which in, you know, New Mario's Wii and stuff, and even, not even in Wii, Mini Mario can be quite, uh, useful. Yeah, you can attack them. So, yeah, Mini Mario, or, this can be quite useful. The only thing is it's kind of hard to keep track of, as you can see. He's really, really small. Um, but anyway, I feel, like, I was playing, um... Was it? I guess Wind Waker, Wind Waker, and Twilight Princess. I was doing a playthrough of that through uh, at um, one my, down in my friend's room, and one thing I noticed, uh, they were playing Final Fantasy 
14? I th no, I think 13. The one that is people consider linear. And besides the fact that the game has a ton of cutscenes, something that I'm not a big... F I'm not. F I'm fine with cutscenes, but there was way too many cutscenes to the point of like an entire disc was just cutscenes, and that's not good. That's not how you should tell a story, in my opinion. Um, people could disagree, but I don't. I just think it's bad storytelling for a game. But um, not that you can't do that. But uh, either way, um, I found even though I wasn't really paying a ton of attention, occasionally I would watch the cutscenes, and I found uh, that the that having characters speak to you and not having any, you know, you know, subtitles either, but just having, even if there is no subtitles, just having characters speak to you, you don't feel as engaged in a conversation than when you're actively reading, um, something that character is saying. Um, one of my friends made us, uh, the argument that he didn't like the fact that he'd, he'd rather have characters not be making noises, like, you know, Minna makes her random, uh, gibberish noises. Um, and then that, uh, takes away from the realism, and I can agree to an extent, but at the same time, I actually don't mind that, I think it, it does kind of add, um, to the, uh, you know, it, do, it does add to the immersiveness to an extent, but I think when they're talking to you, you would think that would immerse you more into the gameplay, but, uh, you're, as much, I guess my thing is, yes, you can skip commentary, you can, oh, crap. Um, I didn't want to kill all those, or those guys. Damn it, you stupid slow, uh, Kershia. But, uh, I didn't want to, uh, um, uh, actually first, cutscene again. Whoa, tons of these. So you're gonna play like long lost toddlers. What? You two. We already fought you. There's, again, one boss battle per fight, or for, per chapter. We can't have you guys fighting you guys multiple times. I am not the violent by nature, you know? I prefer to sell this peacefully, in fact. Say, for instance, you wish to go back to your world. I can do that for you. I don't know, though, Tippy. I wouldn't mind going back. Either way, though. This again. It doesn't do anything but increase both our powers. This Dimension D is... Yeah, like what Tippy said. You're precisely correct. And that is why... What? What? That's a fluoro sprout. Broccoli. Why did you put that in O Chunk's head? It's not a green hat. It's a it's a mind controlling p uh, thing. A child could learn his attack patterns. Well, I'll worry. As such, I requested a few sprouts from my acquaintance. Still, I am up a touch. I call the boy O Cabbage. O Cabbage. O Cabbage. Cabbage. So yeah, uh, this is O Cabbage, and he's basically O Chunk's, but he's a little bit. He does have a, a little bit. He's a little bit more difficult, but honestly, he's not that much different. He's still not that much uh, harder. Um, asparagus, but he's funny. Um, but yeah, he's basically the same. He, I guess he's a little faster or has a little bit of a different attack patterns, but for the most part, he's, uh, not that hard. And again, I recommend using Bowser only because Bowser, uh, he's slow, but with carry, he's fast enough to dodge to an extent. And Bowser's double attack power, just, I mean, I, I do, don't mind using Peach because of her shield with, uh, the umbrella, but Bowser's double attack power... Um, though I just got caught there. But Bowser's double attack power really just makes boss battles go really fast. I'd almost say Bowser's a little bit broken. Uh, obviously the speed is supposed to uh, be a factor that uh, cancels that out, but having carry doesn't, you know, it's not really uh, an issue. Herg. Oh, that sprout dropped off his head. What in am I doing here? Huh? And what are you doing here as well? Oh, I get the picture. You want a lot of challenge. The new improved chunk. Oh, chunks. You got a lot of pamper in your pants, I'll give you that. But this time you're looking through and I'm not even speaking any language I know. Maybe Italian. Me belly's growling. Warrior's rule number one. Never fight on an empty stomach. Tis madness. Madness. This is... Super, Super Hit Mario. But either way... Uh... Yeah, he... Uh, so anyway, uh, we now have a floral sprout, and it is nearly dead, so we can actually wear this. Uh, so let's equip it. I'll wear it. <laughs> I love how Bowser just puts on his nose. <laughs> that noise. Um, anyway, now you can use it to, uh, get into the throne room, because 
uh, the scanner. There's a scanner that will see you and be like, oh, you are a uh, floral fragon. You can go through. Aha ha. Wait, what? Ooh, it's Dimensio. Hmm, if they could beat that one of our chunks, then they are coming along. What is your game, Dimensio? I'm curious. You're really an intriguing character. I should prepare myself as well. So much to do. So precious little time. Yeah, Dimensio's up to something. I'll say this again. He is up to something. Um, but either way, uh, back to my whole uh, discussion. I don't know, I guess, as much as you could just skip dialogue and, you know, button mash, I feel actively reading dialogue gets you more interested in the characters, um, or cutscenes that just have the, it written out. Because when you read something, it feels like, I think you understand it better. Like, if you're, I guess my thing is, and I don't know, this is probably a psychology thing you can actually prove. I feel if you're actually reading, or if you even say it out loud yourself, but, uh, if you read something, you better understand, or you're more, in, uh, you get more into the situation. Whereas if you just listen to what someone say, you, you could actively listen, but even then, though, I feel that reading it really gets you more into, I guess it depends on the person, though, too. Um, and the game, too. I guess, uh, not all games, uh, have to... Not all games, uh, just because they have, uh, dial, uh, you know, uh, voice acting. That doesn't mean that they're, um, you know, less, uh, intriguing. They don't get you... I guess an example of a game that I feel that doesn't have any voice acting that really gets you into the characters, um, is, like, Mother 3, for example. And they do it through dialogue, other things as well, but, you know, I think just having really good dialogue, uh, and only having dialogue, if your dialogue is good and you only have dialogue, the person will read it, and I think that they'll be more, um, sucked into the story and more, um, I guess, yeah, into the story, or more involved, what's the word, I was, uh, it starts with an I too, though, I think, um, uh, not integrated. Um, I, I've said it before, and I think you know what I mean, but either way, uh, they'll be more into the story than if you just have them listening to it, um, because they're actively reading and learning of the story as opposed to passively listening to the story. They could actively listen, but I don't, I don't know, I guess it depends, again, I guess it depends on the person, too. So here we have, um, the inner chambers of, uh, King Crocus. Was, it, was it King Crocus? Yeah. Uh, king Crocus the first. So we're gonna learn a little bit of history. The first king of Flora Kingdom, King Crocus, is known as the Greatest King. He united the Flora Sapiens under a single cause, creating the Flora Kingdom. Uh, he uh, established capital here and uh, was known as the Iron Rose because he was heavily armored. He broke early roads, um, but when his successor, the Prince, wilted, so did his spirit, and then he became uh, the Darkening with his reign of fear. Eventually, he was overthrown. And the king was struck down, marking the official end of the darkening. The wilting words were the Iron Rose shed wither, but wither he did. I like this little, you know, history thing. You don't need to read these, but it's just interesting. Um, kind of look at the history of this kingdom. King Crocus II was the daughter of uh, great ruler King Crocus I. Was imprisoned for being critical of the former king's policies, but when he was overthrown, Crocus II was freed and given the throne. Her efforts to reduce taxes and study diseases made Crocus II very popular. Eventually, she influence helped ease the scars, and she also compiled a flow of the Sapiens brief history called the... I... What, pressed A too fast. Uh, Crocus II feared the f uh, fight for the throne, so she didn't have any... only had one heir, and she was known as the White Maiden. And here we have, like, the little, uh, you know, treasures in the background. Crocus III. It was, uh, all, just one when his mother wilted. The youngest king ever had a great, uh, talent for the art and poetry. Uh, Ice Rose, a book of poems from his 37th year, but he was also afflicted by a terrible disease from the time he was born. Uh, and he died, or wilted at age 88. Many suspect a conspiracy. This was never confirmed. So he didn't really do much. He was kind of like too uncommon in Egypt history. Or Egyptian history. King Crocus IV, the current king, formerly a region for King III, so he's not even uh, from the bu uh, bloodline. After King uh, Crocus III wilted his service, he stabilized influence and political savvy made him popular. His inclu achievements include uh, Mike Troy and Kragons and uh, spearheading an initiative to enslave Kragons and the masses. So, uh, underneath each of these portraits is a cracked area, and if you use Boomer while in 3D mode, you can blow him up to find a secret path. 
Uh, one of them, uh, King Crocus 4, that is, doesn't have a crack, but there is a hole. So even though there's no crack, you know, still bomb there. Because you'll need to. And in each hole, you will find... Though I need to flip again. Um, you will find a box. And you want to make sure that the box is the same color as the king above it. Or king or queen, rather. So this is King Crocus 4. He is red. So we'll want to make this box red. And the easiest way to do this is just uh, get out through, through. Hit it, and now it's red. So now we can... Um, uh, move on to the second one, which is the King Crocus the third. Jump in there. And watch out, a few of them have like the um, floor crag guns in there. You want to make sure to avoid them. The third one is actually already blue, so you really don't have to do that one. Um, if you don't want to. Because all of them start out blue. So actually, yeah, you don't even have to bother with the third one if you don't want to. And we'll turn this one to white, because that's the white maiden. And last, the Iron Rose, who is black. Black is his heart. And there's also a Quim Box with the Alter Shrimp. Cool. So now we're fully healed, and I almost I just killed that Kragon. Poor, pathetic soul. Anyway, once all the colors are matched up, a door, well, a curtain, and a door will reveal itself. So let's head into that door. And yeah, 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 I already read this once. Do -do -boo -do -boo. Okay. And are you ready for the fifth boss of the game? I think... Oh yeah, I think fifth boss. I guess we count many bosses. But either way, uh, here is the fifth boss of the game. And if you couldn't guess, it is Flint Crackly. No, not really. Wee -oo, where are Where are my pretties? This music is kind of creepy. And he's kind of creepy for that matter. Pretties, beautiful things. Wee, bring them to me. More, more, more. Ooh, what is this hideous flashing thing? Let me guess, King Crocus, Guaha, prepared for world-class mulching. Wee wee, you must be the intruders I've heard so much about. Well, I will not forgive the great trashing of my beautiful kingdom. No wee oo. Oh wee oh. Thus you are warned. You can shell this burly, this pretty boy. So yeah. Never. Their sturdy bodies make them such fine workers. It's exquisite. I need them to dig up more gems so I can build a bejeweled palace. We. Yeah, he. that is kind of horrid. Trash is garbage, no matter how you dress it. This world is made for beauty. Okay. And if you need some proof, then have a look at this. A pure heart. Fiend. Hand it over. I can hear it in your voice. You want it so badly, you can barely think. We all seek beauty. How dare you take a high horse over me? Don't compare us to you. We're nothing like you. Well, yeah, I guess we're not. Where are we? Your blabber hurts my ears, and your smell is wilting me. I really stoop to such things, but I'll destroy you myself. Consider it honor. So, this is, um... I don't know why he's just floating around. You know, he's a flower. You would think he would have some kind of... I guess the floral will say... I guess he's in a higher form of existence, though, so... You know, they're like evolved flowers. So either way, though, uh, he is now in his flowered form. Um, wee -oo, here I come. So, you cannot uh, attack him when his uh, flower petals are closed. You'll have to jump up on the little uh, platform thingies he has spawned uh, to hit him. Or really just jump up with carry and use Bowser's fire. Honestly, Bowser's... Again, I almost make the argument that Bowser's a little bit broken. Um, the problem with this battle is, though, he's kind of random, so you'll, you'll run the risk of getting hit. Uh, that's why I almost recommend not using the platforms for this battle. Uh, doing so, again, you kind of run the risk of getting hit by him. Whereas just floating him in the air like that, that works much better. Uh, eventually, after a few hits with Bowser, or more hits with Mario and Peach, uh, he becomes, uh, you know, step away from his stem. I'm not sure, I, thi I think you can jump on him when he reveals himself. Um, not that way. Maybe not, though. Maybe... I don't say Bowser's f fire uh, breath, though, is probably best anyway. Um, whether or not you can jump on him. Uh, either way, though, th like most bosses in this game, this guy's not too difficult. Uh, kind of unique, but... I don't know. Anyway, he is now wilted. Beautiful. Even as I will die, I am beautiful. Well, you were. Now you're not. You're kind of... You're King Crocus. 
Oh crap. <laughs> oh, Bowser. What did you do, guys do, huh? Oh, I don't know. Maybe we just beat your king's petals? How'd it feel, flower face? Hey, shut up. You don't get it at all. I guess we don't. King Crocus was awesome. He totally thought I was people first, man. And you, you wilted him. What? What are you talking about? Water, man! I'm talking about water! The Kragans are polluting our water! What? That's a twist. What's a twist? Those dudes are tossing trash in our river. We had to drink that crud. That dirty water was what drove our king bonkers, don't you get it? So then... Oh. Of course, I knew it all along. Oh, you didn't. Flint. Fragly ho! Emergency special report from the floral front lines. Environmental pollution drives Floral Sapiens mad. Whither will they rampage? So the villagers throwing garbage in the river was the reason for this whole thing. Well, I tried to tell those guys, but my thoughts were too far ahead for their time. This play well with Green Kragon crowd. <laughs> Ratings explode, brah. It's like Crag on Ice meets Baron von Kragenton. Crag on Ice was amazing. Yes, once my fellow villagers see this, they'll surely realize the error of their ways. Once the words of Flint Cragley reach them, they'll throw garbage no more. Yeah, water, man. I mean, it's easily our most precious treasure. Know what I mean? You promise us to dirty our water, and we'll just chill down here and be cool. And we'll totally take those sprouts off your villagers' noggins, too, man. Sounds like a fine way to keep the peace in the land. Keep those promises, folks. That was a rather unexpected turn. You're telling me. Well, you're not a king aside, you guys are totally heroes. Yeah, I love how we killed our king, and, like... They forget about it and then to give us the pure heart. Uh, though the king actually does come back to life. If you come back here later, he's not dead. I I don't really like the fact that they do that, but I guess honestly, this ending is probably more unrealistic than that because no one's gonna be to make that much of a sudden turn. Either way, here is our next pure heart and pixel dance. You got a pure heart. So yeah, uh, that is the f end of chapter five, and um, yeah, it's been fun. Uh, men of True Gert witness live what others can only see through Crag Vision. That is what moves me to travel into the belly of the beast after week after week. Oh, shut up, Flint. Uh, this has been Mega Four Hundred. Next time we'll be having more fun SPM, and I'm reminding you to. Uh, not throw garbage in a river, otherwise flowers will kill you. Yeah. <laughs>